But wait, so how did oh dial-up was just like connected to the wall? That's why you see those Ethernet thing. Yeah, oh. and so you get you would get those weird uh, like got you. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. The the weird noises. Damn. All right, see if I should be here any second. Miss Graffiti. Let's let's record if you want. To. Oh, we're going. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, I guess we'll just keep talking a little bit, and then when she gets here, we'll do like the official intro <laughs> or whatever. What were we talking about? Some real interesting stuff about dial-up. <laughs> about dial-up. Yeah, I never knew. Um, dial-up was like a. It was a thing, but I never got to experience it. Yeah, no, it was real. It was really annoying. Wait, so you were saying you were stealing Wi-Fi from your neighbors? Yeah. All so the way back in the day? If anybody had like an unprotected password, I would just be like, all right, boop. Yeah, I'm yeah, using yeah. your internet for the day. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, typically, they would change it after a while. So. <laughs> They're like, yo, why is my bill so high? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did they... Is it like data to where you have to... Whatchamacallit? Or it wasn't a flat fee back in the day? Yeah, it was a flat fee. <laughs> yeah, okay. just... I don't know. Wolf says it's flat fee. It's a flat fee. That's all I know. <laughs> I don't. I wasn't paying it. <laughs> I was like eight. Because I'm like, if they're doing it like mobile data, that's that's crazy. Nah, nah, nah. But I, I don't know. Who knows? All I know is that we don't got to deal with that shit anymore. Thank God. Fuck dial up. Because <laughs> yeah. you imagine all all the stuff that we do, just like even social media and everything on the computer, just like you have to do dial up. Remember, the world imagine you have a, a roommate. The world might be a better place though. <laughs> <laughs> wait why why because i feel like the phone like i don't know just having so much access to things it's really draining our energy at this point that's definitely true yeah i do think about that all the time it's like you don't even have a chance to do nothing anymore yeah everything is just like so somebody describes social media as like an endless newspaper there's always something that you can see versus once you finish a book or like uh a written form of media it's over with and you can move on to the next thing but social media it's all day just seeing yeah. stone in your face and half of it isn't even true or important at this point. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And the, the thing I was I was thinking about the other day is like back in the day, like, yeah, you would wake up in the morning and you would read news and that was it. And then you go about your day and then you deal with your problems in your own life. Mm -hmm. But now it's like you hear about every single problem in the world, all over the world, all at once. And you can't, there's so much like, I mean, it sounds fucked up, but there's so much wrong in the world that you don't have the bandwidth to care about every single thing. Yeah. You know sure. what I mean? Like, you only have one brain. Sure. You know, and there's so much going on in the world. And you're just constantly being bombarded with negative things all the time. And I feel like it really fucks up people's worldview. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's like, what what can you do about that? Like, I, it's not going to get better as time goes on. I mean, use the internet less. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you really think as time goes on, people are going to be using the internet less? No, I think you're just going to have to, like tap yourself out of that yeah i feel like we're in like this type of void like if i ever decide to have kids they're probably not going to be using like phones like that like they they can use the ipad here and there but i'm gonna limit it because like i feel like you have to just be like i just feel like we're just getting thrown too much shit at this point yeah no that's definitely true and i, I there's so many times i was like i just wish i didn't even have to be on social media the only reason i'm even on it is for the music and promotion yeah like literally, like I have a, you know, well, we're friends on Instagram. Mm -hmm. The my actual like Dan one, I only post music shit on there. Mm -hmm. I don't even post what I'm anything else in my life because I don't care about any posting any of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all I care about is putting music on it. And if you don't have that, it's like people aren't gonna find you. True. Or just like just to remind people constantly, like, hey, I'm still alive. Like I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, imagine imagine you, you're gone for like a week. People are like, oh, I haven't seen you posting. I, I wonder feel if like that happens sometimes. Hey. Hey, yo. How are you? Miss Graffiti <laughs> in the house. Bum, bum, bum. You're fine. I'm not fine. <laughs> Where you been at? I've been frozen, stuck in traffic. Three years going. I would say to you that I'm not, I'm not fine. fine. Yeah, there it is. Fine. <laughs> you guys are just leaving your coats here? Uh, I hung mine's up right there. Yeah, yeah, I leave my coat on the on the floor because I'm gross. The germs make you <laughs> I feel stronger. Like it's you know? worse when you sit down on the train. Like, oh my gosh, the yeah. amount of. I get home from the train, I clean my coat without. What? <laughs> In my pants, dude. Oh my gosh. You know, everything down. I'm not like that. I wish I was. I you know. Take this germaphobe. <laughs> I thought I was bad. That's so funny. My sister. I remember. Uh, my sister was like, I was staying at her place one time, and I sat on her bed. She was like, "Are you really sitting on my bed in street clothes?" Oh my! I can't do that. And I was like, I didn't even think about it though. I was just like, I'm just living my life, going through. Yeah. And Something um, got under my covers, the no. street clothes on. Oh my god! I was no. horrified. Ooh. I was trying to be nice, but like, I got. I'm not doing that no more. No. I had to like immediately wash my sheets after. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I, I imagine that would not be good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> see if you can. Yeah, see if <laughs>
that's absolutely and, hilarious. And welcome to the pod. <laughs> Because it's like, what do you think actually happens to the subway seat during the course of the day? That's what's funny. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what, you know what I'm saying? That's what's making you like, oh my God. All the bodily fluids. (laughs) All right, let's do it. You pull your your mic closer towards me? Towards me? Yeah. Okay. Um, Just give me a quick one to five countdown. Okay. Five, five, (laughs) four, three, two, one. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's do it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Music Maniacs podcast with Sight After Dark. We're Sight After Dark. I'm Dan Berg. I'm Steve Graffiti. And we're today joined by a very special guest. This is one of the first people that we became friends with in the music scene yep. in New York City. Yep. We're going to be talking about who knows what. We're going to be talking about basically being an artist in New York, trying to make a name for yourself, just how we got to this point, how we became musicians, uh-huh. and all that great stuff. What's his name? And his name is... Wanye. This man. Juan motherfucking yay. Juan motherfucking yay. His Instagram used to be Juan motherfucking yay. And every time he would say that at the open mic, I would die. I'm like, that's the best Instagram. I've never forgot it. And the guy (laughs) that used to host the Instagram, um, the mic, open mic, Mike, his name is actually Mike. He was just like, no. He's he's like, that's not good for marketing. I have to change it. (laughs) And I got to say, before we even get going, this man has the smoothest voice that I may have ever heard in person. Oh, yeah. Because let me tell you, tell you guys a quick story. This you remember this? Literally, this was like a year ago. I think I told you about this. Yeah. I was walking at my, my job by right across the street from Grand Central, and you were busking outside, and I couldn't even see you, but I heard like the last two notes of a song, <laughs> like literally just the very end, not even the full song. And I was like, I stopped. I was like, I know that voice. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? And I literally started walking around the building. I'm like, where's Wanye? And I saw you, like, right as you were finished, you were packing up. I'm like, bro, I knew that was you. There was no way it could have been anybody else. Listen, I didn't. I never know how to distinct voice like that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 100%. I was like, there's no way that that's not Wanye. And it, and it clearly was you. Yeah. So I, had, I wanted to say that story right off the bat. Isn't that hilarious? I feel like sometimes, like, you ever, like, see somebody, like, just randomly that you haven't seen in a while, you're just like, wait, what are the chances that we would meet at this time. Like, I feel like I'm not very religious, but I'm very spiritual. Mm-hmm. Spiritual. Yeah. What spirit? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I just be feeling like the world just be working and be like, oh, you guys have to meet right now. Like, yeah. 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 100%. I mean, I feel like that kind of happened with us. I, I think mean, so. we were just doing the open mic solo. I was trying to start a band. I moved here, tried to start a band. I didn't know anybody. And then I was doing the open mics. So I'm like, who wants to start a band? And Sifu was like, ah, I might be down. And that was four years ago. I know. That's crazy. I think I met you guys after like your second show. Yeah. You, like two weeks ago, we met here and then we decided to become a band. Yeah. Oh, I, wow. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I even saw you. I, I had to have seen you perform one day that I went and performed, but like mm-hmm. I, I didn't meet you until like after we became like a unit, yeah. which is pretty crazy. But I don't know. I've seen you sing on stage and like right away I was like into your singing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So it's like even like besides like just meeting you at the open mic, like I knew that we were going to be like good friends. I don't know. It's something about the spirit that comes out of your singing. I don't know. Something about it. I just thought like it was going to be possible. So like we all met at an open mic, if you guys don't know. <laughs> and it's called Big Chalker. Inspired Word. NYC. And Wanye was laying down those vocals and we were doing our thing. And then just somehow we just got, because we're seeing each other all the time. Right? We were there yeah. every single Tuesday yeah. for like six months, a year, yeah. whatever long it was, up until like COVID. We were all like baby, I'm not going to say baby musicians, but like <laughs> getting our feet wet, like, all right, yeah. we're doing this. Okay. Yeah. 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 We were all kind of figuring it out. Uh, yeah. And I think once it's like a certain class of us, like once we saw that each other was coming like every week, we just started to come every week. Yeah. Like it just became a thing. And I, wa- I wanted to ask you, because obviously I know how we ended up there, but like what was like, what's the backstory that brought you not only to like being a singer, but like to being there specifically? Like, how did you find it? Like, you know, like how did you start doing the open mics? Like what, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I was like, Super scared to drop my first songs. First song ever, like, put out was called Learn Ya. Um, and I had to let you know. <laughs> That's still, like, the biggest song, and I hate it sometimes. You but. guys got to check it out. <laughs> um, yeah, so I worked on that with my friend Damien. And then I was just like, dude, I really want to start going to open mics, but I'm super scared. He was like, I'll just come with you. 
Um, and we did that first one. He recorded me and everything. And I was like, wow, I kind of like this, but I was super scared. I think I still have it on um, like my first ever performance on Instagram, but it's um, archived right now. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good to look back at sometimes. Hell yeah. For yeah. sure. So so that was like the first that you had ever performed as a singer ever? Or um, like- so I did like something else, but like I never performed like my own music. I used to do like a cover. I think I went to one open mic before this. It was at this, um, like, the warehouse district in the Bronx, right? I feel like, I think it's off of Brook Avenue. Okay. Um, so I performed there once with my brother, but, like, this one was, like, my first official one. Gotcha. Yeah. So at what point, because, I mean, like, I mean, I was already complimenting your voice. We've already been saying this. At what point were you, like, sitting around and you're like, you know what? Like, I feel like I actually can sing. You know what I mean? Because I feel like a lot of people never even have a moment like that or yeah. they think that they can and they really can't <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i don't know like what was it like what was your moment you were like i i think i could be an artist you know um or if there was i don't know like i feel like uh probably around 2018 i was just like so i, I was working at macy's at the time and i had a friend that um he dropped he was a rapper he dropped a song in a um video to go with it after that, I was just like, hmm, I think I have a little voice. Let me test this out. I mean, I started singing from the age of like 10 and uh, writing songs as well, but I was never con- confident in my voice. Mm. It was very high pitched. I hated like the falsetto at the time. I was like, I sound like a girl. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm squeaky. Like, ugh. Uh-oh. That's um, good in R&B though. You could be like the the high voice in like the shy lights. Yeah, but like, you know, like when you're younger, you're like, I want to be a man. No, yeah. <laughs> like, That's this. true. Well, uh, like, um... Yeah, so he he dropped his music and everything. I was just like, hmm, I might be able to do this. And then I started getting in the studio. I was like, oh, shit, I sound good. Because that was like my first time ever, like just being in the studio, recording my voice. And I kept listening to it back and back. I was like, oh, I think I could do this. Um, and then as time went on, I just started like getting better at it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So when did you guys have that experience? You first. You as a singer, <laughs> you first. a guitarist, <laughs> and a rapper. Singing? I just knew I like had to sing. Like, at first, I used to write poetry, and then I was dating, like, my boyfriend who became, like, my husband at the time, and I was like, he was like, you should you should start rapping, and I was like, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, no, you should do it. So then I started, like, rapping with him. We had, like, a little group together, and then I wanted to start singing the hooks, and then after that stage, I was like, well, I want to play guitar, and I was like, and I actually want to sing. So it just kind of gradually went, and my dad was a singer, so I knew I was in tone deaf. And like in my school, they test you for the choir. So like everybody has to join the choir. Uh. So they test your voice when you're like in like grade school. So I knew that I wasn't tone deaf and I could sing. And I was just like, why not? Like, so. That That's interesting. Yeah. I have a funny story about school choir and then I'll answer, I'll answer <laughs> the question. So I didn't really get into music till I was like in middle school. Okay. In elementary school, everyone did chorus. Yeah. And I was so not into music at the time that I elected out of chorus, and it was only me and one other person in the entire class that did, were like, I don't want to do that shit. You want me to sing? No. And we literally just like, everyone would be a chorus and we'd be in the back playing Oregon Trail. Remember, <laughs> you remember Oregon Trail, that, that old, the old computer game where you got to like go out west and then you die of dysentery? Okay. <laughs> that's, basically, that's basically, but yeah, so like I, I didn't care about music at all. But then, well, the, the full story, you ever heard of the, you know, The Doors, the band, The Doors? Yeah. So I got into them after just like seeing them into a movie and then I started listening to other music and then I started listening to like ACDC and like the riffs are so easy that I was like, I feel like I could do that. <laughs> like, I feel like I could really do that. And my dad just happened to have like an old guitar that was like 10 years old, just sitting in like the back room somewhere and I just picked it up and then like I started getting into it and then I, next thing I knew, I just, I wouldn't, couldn't think about anything else. Wow. You know what I mean? Like I had been obsessed with things before that. I like, for, I was obsessed with cars when I was like 10 years old. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, the, well, the Chrysler 300, it's so cool looking at all oh, the this and that. And then I was obsessed with video games. But as soon as I picked up a guitar, I just didn't care about anything else. Wow. Like pretty much to this day. So it, it wasn't like a specific moment, but it was like, it's been years and I'm still doing this. I clearly love it. Yeah. I'm just always so amazed when... Like, I don't know, when people are just able to pick up an instrument and just go at it, I'm like, where did you get that talent from? Like, because I don't know, like, so with, with singing, I'm like, we speak um, every day. You just turn that into a melody. Same thing with rap. Mm-hmm. First, it's like a guitar. You're just like, mm. 
Let me fucking play this. Like, I don't understand how you guys do that. I don't know. It's amazing. Yeah, they put me in front of piano when I was little. It's like they, I don't know, they wanted me to do something. I needed a skill set, but I hated the piano. Like, I just started dancing around the room and, like, the teacher was like, don't bring her back. <laughs> He's like, put her in dance. So I felt like I couldn't do an instrument, but then it's like something about, I don't know, something about the challenge of, of, of it. Like, I was like, I know I can do that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, something about it. I don't know. It's like weird. But I don't know, you'll probably end up wanting to play an instrument a Just couple years guitar. down the line you oh, did right yeah. didn't you buy it during covid i did well that got warped in the rain when i moved oh, oh so no. okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna say it. i'm gonna smash it for a music video i'm gonna yeah get to be so be, be someone is that rocky vibe okay. yeah yeah smash it that's what's up um but yeah i just bought an epiphone mm-hmm. it's it was like 200 dollars. yeah so and then i'm gonna learn how to play a couple songs and we'll see where i go from there hell yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I think so. I think it's good to have like an instrument skill. Like it just, I don't know. Like if you're a singer, like, or if you do anything musically, I just feel like it's good to have like another one. But maybe I'm just too scatterbrained. I don't know. But I feel like just being a guitarist, like you need something else to offset your your desire to play that or else that becomes like a job Mm -hmm. you know what Mm. i'm saying like you see i like you play guitar but you also produce music like you know what i'm saying and you sing and you want to play guitar yeah it's like like a layer yeah Yeah. you need like you you need something to offset it or else your main thing doesn't become as fun i I don't know for some reason i feel i'm going through that right now that's why i got guitar yeah Yeah. (laughs) you're like like, i need something else to yeah round it out i used to produce um i used to produce a while ago but i was just like the beats aren't fitting me i need something just more or something more sure back because all i really knew how to do is produce trap beats mm-hmm. um versus like if you have a guitar you could just do mad harmonies over that it adds a lot to your your layers yeah, yeah. that's absolutely true mm-hmm. that's why i guess it's so funny like there's because especially with guitar there's so many different facets of it the thing that made me pick it up was because i thought it would be so easy because like listen you know the song highway to hell by acdc yeah. mm-hmm. it's literally like do 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 i'm like yo i can count to three <laughs> you know what i mean like i could do that like no problem and that's what made me want to pick it up because i thought it was easy and then like as i keep going into it i mean now i've been doing more than half my life i'm like I, there's still so much more to learn mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but the thing that made me do in the first place was that i thought it wouldn't be hard it's like highway to, <laughs> you know it's like you thought it was highway to hell and you walked in and it was like thunderstruck yeah yeah basically <laughs> i'm just like wait my fingers supposed to do at the same time <laughs> well how is that possible i'm yeah. like <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, it, it takes a while. I feel it like takes that's a while. What makes it beautiful though. The fact mm-hmm. that you always feel like a student in it. Yeah. You'll never get bored. That's like, true. Oh shit, I could do this now. I hope so. If I ever met somebody that was just like, Yeah, I mastered guitar. I don't need to learn anything else. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. I'm like, you need to you need to check your ego a little bit. Yeah. Like nobody has ever mastered an instrument. Like I don't that, think like there's so. virtuosos or whatever in any instrument, but there's always something more you can do. Definitely. If you're a violin guitar, piano, there's always something. Vo- mm-hmm. Voice, there's always more techniques you can be working on, like breath work, blah, blah, blah. Like you can't ever just say, yeah, I did it. Yeah. I know how to sing, that's it. I can't, there's nothing else like better I can do. Like, I be will wild. say that right now. See if it's the master singer, she's got a black belt <laughs> singing and there's no, whatever, what, five stripes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the great thing about it. And really just about, I think art in general is like, you can always be working on it and you can always get better, like your mm-hmm. entire life. Like we were just talking about, um, what was the podcast, uh, podcast we did? We were talking about Jeff Beck, the guitar player. He just died at like 78 years old mm-hmm. and he got better every single year of his life. Like he never stopped working at it. Yeah. And you listen to the recordings and like, you can hear it. Yeah. It's like- that's how it should be. 100%. Yeah. yeah, my mom, like, we have family in Barbados. Bajan. Yeah. I'm Bajan on both sides, too. Oh, that's cool. But they Americanized me. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty, pretty New York. But, like, when we were little, there was this artist, whenever whoever went or vid- visited or whatever, they would bring back artwork from this artist. And her name was, like, Jill something. And my mom recently went. Like, I'm so far past that age and she recently went and she brought like a water bottle and it had like the artist's artwork and i'm like oh i was like i love barbados artwork and blah 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 my mom's like you know it's the same artist like it's the same artist's artifacts that i've been bringing back from barbados Mm -hmm. since you were like really really little Mm -hmm. and it's like imagine like that artist like 
that's like 30 years you know what I'm saying? Of like doing different art and stuff like that. And it's like, I remember her artwork from the time I was like a baby, basically. And now I'm like a full grown adult. And my mom's like, yeah, she's still doing it. Wow. I'm like, that's beautiful. it's crazy. Yeah. The, the thing I think about it that, that's the coolest is like any art that you make can possibly outlive you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like anything that you put out can be around after you've passed away. Like that can be more of a memory and more of you being around than anything else, sure. except maybe like literally having children yeah. but even after that it could still be around yeah. like it made me think of a uh, freddie mercury when he was about to die like he knew he was gonna die from aids they were still working on an album and he was like i'm i need to sing as much as possible because yeah. this is my last chance to like make an imprint on the world mm -hmm. and like up until the day that he died he was singing and recording as much as he possibly could wow. you know it's like your immortal baby you know, it's true though and i mean he i mean specifically him like he's immortal mm -hmm. like we he's been dead for before i was born yeah you know what i mean and we still all know him and people will be talking about him forever yeah people like to worship things that's true like <laughs> it's like it's dan berg's pick <laughs> man it's oh. just like whoa <laughs> Like every little thing. My mom has a chocolate bar from a Prince concert. And then now <laughs> the, <laughs> is that like his picture on the cover? Wait, and now he that had, he died. He it's had not Prince shaped. banded, like Prince branded chocolate? Yes. Yeah. I, I thought it was going to be shaped what? like him. I know. I know the, the, the cover is like a cartoon drawing of him. But it would have been like, dope if it was a symbol. That yeah. Fun. That would have been dope, right? But yeah, and now that he died, you know, like she's not going to open that chocolate at all. Wow. Yeah. Like, so now he's like immortalized and stuff. It's like the weirdest thing. I'm just like, that's so You got to check eBay to see how much that's going for. That chocolate is probably disgusting. I mean, you got to <laughs> eat it. No. It's just a. It's I don't just think anyone's eating at that. this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, I think you should open it and shellac it. Like, <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, people love to like immortalize things. So yeah, it's like, it's weird how you'll put an imprint down like your music and then it'll live on for years and years and years. If you had a track that you wanted to live on for years and years and years, mm -hmm. which one would it be? Of my own? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Damn, that was a good question. That's good. <laughs> um, no pressure, no pressure. Now, it would definitely be uh, Bronx Bloom. Okay. It's like the last track of my project. Um, like, I don't know. I just feel like it's been like my best writing. Uh -huh. And I feel like it needs to be a Bronx anthem like at this point. All right. So yeah. Speaking of your project, I mean, you want to tell people about your latest project, like like how it came together? Like, you want to promote anything like while we're here? Like, um, this is the time. Yeah. So um, it took like, damn, I started it around the time I met you guys. Okay. So there was like so many songs that like were supposed to be flushed out on it. Um, but due to like mixing issues, budget, all that, like my studio time, it's like paying like 240 a session. Wow. Mm. It gets very expensive. Um so it was supposed to be out like four years ago, um, but I dropped it in September of last year. Ten tracks, but um, yeah, it's a mixture of everything. It's um, some R and B, some pop. I even like tried rapping a little bit. I don't think I'm the best, but <laughs> you guys could be the judge of that. <laughs> um, and yeah, oh, I'm so awkward with talking about myself. <laughs> no, nah, it's all good. Well, well, then specifically that song, like what, to like tell the people like what that song means to you, like how that came about, like why it would be the one song that you want to live on. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, so when it comes to that song, so I, uh, just being from the Bronx, I have like a great sense of pride from being from there. Cause uh, I just feel like it gets such bad press. Mm -hmm. um, they make it seem like people are shooting every day. It's a wild, wild west. I'm like, as long as you like, Keep to yourself. You should be fine for the most part. Keep to yourself. You won't get shot. A Bronx yeah. motto. But if, like, <laughs> if like a drug deal is going on, you're over here like, young man, what are you doing? Like, of yeah. course, like, like, <laughs> something's going to happen. Um, <laughs> yeah. So being from the Bronx, I have like a great sense of pride from being from there. And I basically just wrote about like my experiences growing up there. Like I have a line um, talking about one can dream in a small project apartment. Puffed up chest, blowing smoke in the air. Stay true to the straight. Stay true to your roots, like the one that grow your hair. Like I don't know. I just feel like it encompasses the Bronx overall. I even talked about how like we have like no hope based on like the stuff that we see, mm. but your dreams are the only thing that just keep you going. In that sense, so yeah. That's beautiful. Bronx keeps creating it. Yeah. I mean, that's what hip hop started. So, if it's cool with you, we'll probably we can might even play it in the background of the podcast <laughs> as you're talking about it. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, 
So yeah, that's a beautiful thing. So wait, so so you worked on the project originally like four years ago, you said? Yeah, it was like I had, so I don't know, I think you guys went to my feature. Were you yeah. guys at the feature? The yeah. first one? So a lot of those songs never saw the light of day just because of mixing issues, all that. So if it, if I had those songs, it would have been out a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But I had to add more songs to give it some depth. Um, and then the pandemic hit. And then, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't have the money to fund it. Um, I also, uh, I feel like I wasn't, I didn't have any ideas at that point. Like, mm. I feel like just being stuck in a house for three months, you're just like, shit, I'm sad. I'm depressed. Like, I have nothing to write about. <laughs> so okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was a weird time. It was. Yeah, you need to live life in order to like bring, like grab some inspiration from it. Speaking of living life, the first thing that I, like the first live music that I saw after COVID was you at that backyard, like house party oh, thing. Oh, fire. That was so fun. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> even, I don't remember. You just like hit me up randomly like, yo, like I'm going to be in Bushwick, like, like come to this house. I'm like, yeah. and I was like. I was kind of like nervous. I was like, I'm gonna be around like people again. Just like, just cause. Uh, I mean, but you were like working the whole pandemic. Yeah, but no one was there. Oh, there was no God. people around. I was going into empty buildings. Yeah. I was on the subway. There was no one else in the fucking subway. It was weird. That's super creepy. Dude, I went to Times Square. It looked like I am legend. There was no, oh, there was yeah. nobody there. Like I literally went places just to see how weird it was. I probably would have loved it though. Very much Those like. Those were beautiful <laughs> times as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. I had a great time. Sorry if that, you know, of course, like it was unfortunate, but like. Having nobody around in the city was like great. Yeah, it was interesting at the time, but it's like I feel like I've talked. I talked about this on one of the podcasts before. It's like after seeing that, and then now, like I'll go back to the same places, and it's totally packed. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like I've seen behind the curtain. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. I'm just like this whole uh, society reality. It's very, it's a very thin line. Yeah, and like now everywhere I go in the city, I'm just like, yeah, this is nice, but this can all go away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's crazy is that like. When I was younger, like an area like this, like let's say like on a Sunday, it would never be like this pack. On a Saturday, of course it would be. But sometimes like you would never have to walk in the street just to get somewhere. Mm. So it's just like, you know, and like certain days of the week, certain times of the night, like you wouldn't see a lot of people on the train or the subway and stuff like that. So for me, it was just kind of like a take back. So like when I was younger, mm -hmm. so it's just like, I just feel like you became like an actual like old school New Yorker that way. Because <laughs> you were able to see the city without so many people yeah. all the time. Like, you know? Yeah. Quick, quick story from that, that I think is funny. I might, I don't think I told this on the podcast. I might've told you this. Um, so yeah, I used to, so I would work in like real estate where we had like two floors of like people that rented offices and I would just go in to like basically open it up and I could control the music. So one day I went in and I literally did not see one other person, not even a security guard for the building. Like I didn't see an entire person from the way, from leaving my apartment to getting into the building. That's wild. And <laughs> it's I, not like that in my neighborhood. <laughs> that's just, it was it was weird. Like it was very strange. And I get in there and I can control the music. So I played every single Led Zeppelin album from front to back. <laughs> it literally I started right when I got there. I went through I don't remember, it's like ten albums. By the time that it was over, it was like time to leave. Like wow. the timing was like perfect. And I'm like, all right, well this this was an all right day, I guess. <laughs> and then have my own little party. <laughs> yeah. Your workday warriors, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> that's it's kind of what it was. That's insane. But yeah, like I can remember like my mom worked in the trade center like when I was little. So I can remember like going on a Friday to like meet her at work and it would be like late and like nobody would be in the building like or it'd be like totally empty down in a financial district like stuff like that so like yeah it was like a flashback so it's like that's cool that you experienced that like, that's the real New York empty no <laughs> <laughs> people don't live here <laughs> I just like the fact that I, I didn't have to like I didn't come into the city for like four or five months mm -hmm. it was so beautiful just to like be in my neighborhood and just not to hop on a train. Yeah. <laughs> I hate trains sometimes. It's it's too much. Yeah, sometimes it's really annoying. Yeah. I know people that refuse. Like, my boyfriend bikes everywhere because he refuses to go on the subway. Mm -hmm. He's like, I can get to any point in Manhattan now from Columbus Circle in 15 minutes. Anywhere. Uptown, downtown, it wherever a skill it is. at this point. Yeah. Because he knows all the little, like, things. He's his but, own train. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> That's so funny. Even you talk about like not going to the city because it's like even like that terminology is like that's kind of like a New York thing. Because like to me, like I came here from Florida, like I, I like Tampa area. It's not like it wasn't a city, but it's not this. Yeah. So to me, everywhere in New York is the city. Uh -huh. Like the Bronx is the city. Yeah. Brooklyn's the city. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't until I got here that I'm, when people started saying, oh yeah, we're going to go into the city. I'm like, we're already in the city. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, no, days. like Manhattan, Manhattan is the city. I'm like, <laughs> all right. I mean, whatever you say, like to me, it all feels like the city. Like, yeah. yeah. But when yeah. you're outside of New York city, like if you're in like Rockland or have to go visit another state, New York city people will be like, we're from the city. We're from New York yeah. City. But when you're in New York City, yeah, it's like Manhattan is the city. It's like weird. Yeah, that took me a little while to figure out. Because <laughs> um, at one point, though, like Brooklyn was like, especially where I'm from, like East Flatbush, that was like farmland mm-hmm. at one point. And we knew an old lady who knew when it was like farmland. So some at some point in the Bronx, too, like that's when, when people got rich and left downtown Manhattan, they would like move out to the Bronx or move out on the island, Queens, or like down into Brooklyn. That's where you wanted to raise families and stuff like, like that. Like the suburbs. Yeah, it was the, it was the suburbs at that point. So I think that's where the terminology kind of came from mm-hmm. going into mm-hmm. the city. Yeah. But now it's just like, yeah, I don't know why we all say it's still like. Yeah, that is wild. I mean, when you think of like the history of the city, like I think the reason that it's called the Bronx is because most of the land was owned by like one family that was their last name was Bronx. So people would be like, "Oh, we're gonna go up to the Bronx, like like their place." Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, and that that and then the name just stays. Colonization. It is. <laughs> it has been like that forever, bro. Both my grandparents are from the Bronx. Oh, you know what I mean. Right what section? Uh, Grand Concourse. Okay, I live in that section now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm it from is. East though, like Soundview section. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But it's just weird thinking about it. It's like they they were born in like the 30s. Wow. And it's shit like they still talk like they rode the same trains that I ride. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come visit us. Uh, like, little... When was the last time you've been to the Bronx? Um, probably like a year ago. Okay. But I'm a, we need to play more up there. We haven't played any shows in the Bronx. Yeah. To be down. honest, it's... There's really not much places to play, mm. I feel. Um, I want there to be more places. I just don't want that to come with gentrification. Cause you know, like you get like this hot new club or hot new bar and then like- Money starts coming in. Yeah, then you wanna, then you're like, you're displacing all these people and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully we can get some like more venues and stuff. Yeah. It'd be fire. Yeah, I mean, with the boroughs, with the outer boroughs, it's like going deep in the outer boroughs is like a task. Yeah. You know, you have to, that's why like Williamsburg is so popping because it's just like right across the bridge. Mm -hmm. But like going like, deep into east flatbush or deep into like flatbush marine park it's like they probably do have things going on there but it's like to constantly go there it's just like less convenient yeah because it's like it's like a two fare zone where it's like you have to take a bus and a train or a train and a cab or you know you can't just like get there like manhattan is so i think that's why like a lot of people just don't go out to the outer boroughs because i know i like even being in east flatbush if there was an open mic in Sheepshead Bay every week, I wouldn't have like, <laughs> like, no, no I way. cannot get down yeah. there. Like, yeah. yeah. I feel like that about Co-op City. Like, I can get to Soho faster than Co-op City. <laughs> I'm not doing all that. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? So, when we were talking right before we, uh, the pod, like, you were saying, like, you're trying to get, like, kind of shows together. Like, things, you know, like, artists, like, artist-funded yeah. shows and stuff. Is that something that you try to do specifically, like, in the Bronx? Like, to kind of do that and kind of develop that a little more or do you Um, not even get that far thinking about it yet i'm just like thinking about it like i had like like i was telling you i had like a bad experience with that company before um which were their main name was for the podcast (laughs) (laughs) um yeah i had a bad experience with that company to where like i they told me to come at seven and then um all my people came at seven and all that i didn't perform till like 11 45 and they didn't like let me know that I was going to perform that late. And while I was there, they were still like giving me the runaround. So I want to start doing artist funded shows to where we get paid. We fund it. Even if it's like each artist gets $50, at least we feel like we're benefiting from the fruit of our labors, labor. Um, and I feel like it's more enjoyable that way. You don't have to deal with like the whole numbers thing. Um, Cause people just want to hear live music. And if they, if they fuck with you, they're going to come and see you again. So yeah. yeah. Like that house show. Yeah. It was so amazing just because it was, unpaid people were just drinking enjoying themselves and it was so raw yeah. and i want i want to make music well music venues more like that now so we'll see yeah. yeah i mean it's all about just 
putting on the best show for the people that come. Because yeah. it's just like, for anybody to leave their house and take their time to come see you, it's like, that's a big deal, yeah. I feel like. And it's like, they should feel that they didn't waste their time doing that. Exactly. So it's like, I, and this is a, like a mindset for me, like I was playing in bands for years, like in Florida before, and my I didn't even think about it like that. I was just like, yeah, we're gonna go do this. We're gonna go play well. We're gonna go play great. I didn't even think about really the crowd so much. You know what I mean? But then as yeah. I get older, I start thinking, I'm like, the show isn't for us. Like the show is for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I feel like with that attitude, if you just give as much to the the crowd, to the whoever's come out to see you as possible, then people are going to keep coming to see you and it's going to grow. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And what anything- you taking out the time, time in their day to come see you. Yeah. Just to travel sometimes an hour there, hour back. Yeah. And then like your performance is going to be a minimum of 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah. They wasted like not wasted, but they spent like <laughs> two like two and a half hours like coming to see you and just being present. So yeah, definitely feel that. Yeah, yeah no, it's definitely true. But it's like even we think about like the open mic. It's like sometimes you could spend an hour or so to get somewhere to play eight minutes. Yeah. There was times in Florida where we would. I mean, it's crazy thinking about this now. I would never want to do this now. We would drive four hours from where we lived to a different city. Holy shit! To go play for thirty minutes. And then drive four hours back and get home as the sun's coming up. Wow. wow. That's dedication. Yeah. I respect it. Me too. I mean, it is what it is. I didn't feel like I had a choice at the time. I was like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I did that shit on a broken it's foot too. It. Oh, man. I mean, that shows you love it though. Broken foot and everything. <laughs> I would have been like, nah, I'm going to stay home. You guys enjoy it. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if I told this story on the podcast. I broke my foot here. Well, in Jersey, actually, while I was on a tour with my last band, Ooh. I didn't even realize it was broken until like a week later. How did? I thought I just sprained it. I was playing basketball and it, w- it was really stupid. It was 4th of July. We had like a, f- we had a show in Brooklyn July 2nd and then we had a few days off. The next show was July 5th. So July 4th, we were at this girl's house in Jersey that my bass player knew somehow. And there, she, her driveway is slanted like this mm-hmm. and there's a basketball hoop on it. And I was drinking. I'm like, who wants to play basketball? <laughs> <laughs> it literally, I just, all, I just rolled my ankle. But since it was slanted like this, like all the force went onto, you. you know what I mean? And I snapped it. And, but I just thought that I had sprained it. Like I've, how, how many times someone rolled an ankle? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't even think anything about it. And then we kept playing the, the shows. We played like three more shows. We drove all the way back to Florida. And after like a week, I'm like, why is my foot still hurt? Like it hasn't gotten any better. <laughs> like so I eventually I went to the doctor they were like not only is it broken but you need surgery and we got to put some metal in your foot oh, shit. Wow. and I have a screw in my foot to this day and that wow. was like at least 10 days after I'd done it shit yeah I just didn't even know I just was I literally would be like before the show have my foot up like iced <laughs> and they're like all right you guys go on a five I'm like all right <laughs> And I can only imagine you're probably like jumping during the performance and shit. Like, I was trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never broken anything. That's, I wish, so I always wanted, like, I always wanted broken bones growing up. Cause I was like, people get to sign my cast. I get to yeah, be special. Yeah, kids are crazy. It's not worth it. <laughs> but it's not worth adult, it, kids I'm, like, at home. I'm so careful. Yeah. Like I have like a, a dislocated patella to where it just pops out. Mm-hmm. I can oh, see it. Yeah. Or on ice or anything. I'm like, I'm going to bust my ass and be fucked up forever. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, that was crazy. I just saw it right yeah. now. Yeah, it was it dancing. Is, <laughs> it twerks. <laughs> Whoa, that's wild. You should let it perform with you. I'm right? saying make it dance with you. Burn, yeah. <laughs> let you go. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's just crazy. It's just crazy what you do for things that you love. Yeah. You know? Even people you love. Yeah. So basically, we're pretty much collaborating, talking right now. What are your like favorite types of collabs? Because you have sung with other people before. Oh yeah, so um, like just in music overall, like best collab. Yeah, like what's what's your favorite collab that you've done, and then what's your favorite type of collab? Like, did you like to hear? Um, so the favorite collab I've done, well, it's unreleased right now, but I worked with this um talented musician called Dane Carter. Um, it's a song called Mirrors and it's basically about how uh, at the end of the day all you really got is yourself because you were born alone you're going to die alone Mm -hmm. Um, and just like the process of dealing with that and like trying to make it and you doubting yourself people doubting you Um, but I also love this track I did for this writing camp during the summer it's called Move On Um, this artist named Kenji he was like playing like a couple chords and we caught a vibe and we ended up just making a track for it. 
Yes, um, that's yeah. dope. And I can't wait. So we're gonna jam after this. We're going back to yeah. Brooklyn to jam. I can't wait for that. We'll put we'll record that. We'll put that up on our YouTube channel, whatever. But I also that you brought up the the documentary and stuff. Yeah. And I I. I if you could talk about that, that'd be great. Because I went to the premiere when you yeah. invited me to, and oh, that was so cool. Dude, all right, I got to talk about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, there is uh, this gummies on the table. So Whoa, okay. Yeah, so I thought it said CBD gummies. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. We're going to enjoy ourselves. Gummies. Um, well, basically, I just wanted to like be less tense. So I thought it was going to be a body thing. At the premiere? Yeah. Okay. Um, but it ended up being edibles. Oh, and like the geez. milligrams were very high <laughs> so like i get on stage i'm like okay i feel weird maybe it's the liquor cool and then when i saw you you were high as fuck later on so <laughs> i was being so weird because i was oh. high i had like i'm not good with like weed highs like i, I used to be a heavy smoker I had to stop because it gives me anxiety yeah like i remember like being at the door and i'm like trying to like talk to people because i was trying to grab um, cause I think, I'm not sure if you wanted to speak to Anthony or- Yeah, yeah. Like, and I did end up speaking yeah, to him. Yeah. I was trying to like connect you guys, but I'm just like, I feel like my space is being invaded. I could hear like, you ever just feel like disconnected to where you can like hear like people's conversations off to the side and you're yeah, not yeah, even yeah. tapped into your own conversation. Mm -hmm. I just felt like that. I was just like, oh my God, I can't, I can't do this. Yo, that so, is yeah. so funny because I remember thinking that you were really quiet on that day, but I thought you were nervous yeah. because you were performing no. the you know the documentary that you were in. Which I think if you want to tell people what the documentary was, it's a really cool idea. Yeah. But yeah, I remember <laughs> thinking that you were really quiet that day. Yeah, and then now you tell me that that's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, me and Shakira like we're on the train. We're just like, wait, why do we both feel this way? That's and he, so then he mentioned that, and I was just like, ah, oh, okay. Like I'm over here like trying to eat my pizza, and I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> like, I don't like this feeling. Um, but yeah, I did a, a documentary during the summer with um, documentary slash writing camp with uh, Project Fail and um, Element. So Element is this new app that uh, they're trying to go nationwide, not nationwide, but worldwide with it to where they connect different artists. Like, let's say um, Seif is a singer, then is a guitarist. I like the work that you did. Like, you're able to like post uh, 25 second clips of your work and you can be like, oh, I like that riff you did. Let's collab. Mm. Um, so they basically wanted to like show what can possibly be done if you like just throw 20 artists in a room. Mm. And um, we were there for three days. I was only able to attend two because I had to work. Um, and we ended up coming out with like a 10 track project. And um, I shot a live with um, Kenji. We did move on and it was like super fun. So yeah. Yeah, that's dope. And like I said, we were at the premiere and I like, I had no idea what to expect because you DM me yeah, like two like days before. Random. So like, Cause people were like, "Oh, I can attend, then I can't attend," but like it worked out. Yeah, for showing up. Yeah, no, dude, yeah. that's what I'm saying. It was because I had no idea what to expect. Because you just you he DM DM me like two days before. He's like, "Yo, like you want to come to the premiere of this documentary that I'm in?" Worked like not too far. I was like, "It should be easy commute." Yeah, and it was. Yeah. So I was just like, "Yeah, fuck it, I'll come after work." But I had no idea what it was because I I don't I didn't know I, we didn't really talk too much about that before. I was just like, "Okay, why don't you invite me? I'll come see." And it was really cool. Yeah, I've never been. It's it was at a Soul House. It's like, oh, this looks bougie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, the video I'm a little dust cool. ball from the Bronx. This shit look fire. <laughs> Hell yeah. 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 It looked like a nice venue from what I could see. I didn't go. Sorry. I feel like you're always busy. I, I do have, I have work at weird times. That's yeah. why it's like, it's like Friday evening, like really late or like, it's just weird times. It's like, it's not nine to five. It's, it's when people want to go chill and hang out. Like that's the work hours that I have. Right. So it's like, I still enjoy that fun. Pilates class. Like you made me like Pilates. We oh yeah. Oh yeah. We uh, should say that. That for that's the only time I ever did Pilates. By the way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Sifa teaches Pilates as well as many other things. Yeah. And like literally, this was like two weeks before the city shut down, wasn't it? It was like yeah. right before yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. And one day, Sifa was like, "Oh, you guys should come take a class." And we're like, "All right, yeah. shit." And we showed up, and we, we it was like, I feel like everybody else canceled, or there was like one other person, right? Yeah. There was yeah. one. Yeah, it was like really late on a Friday night. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the area people like to go drink and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And then these guys are in my Pilates class on the Reformer. <laughs> that was super fun. I yeah, that was fun teaching yeah. you guys. Yeah, excellent teacher. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that was a good time. It felt Writing like it was reviews. a private lesson. No. <laughs> <laughs> do you all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Writing all do it. Yeah. Yeah, send, me, send me whatever you want me to put it on. Okay, okay. Yeah, 100%. Thanks. Um, I almost forgot about that. That was, <laughs> it feels like so long ago. I know. Yeah. I feel like time is definitely a concept. I mean, time is a concept, but... yeah. I was talking to my friends. I was just like, yo, time is really just flying out of nowhere. Like, I feel like you have, like, somebody just con controlling, like, the world clock. 
So mm. they're just like, mm, let's speed this shit up. Yeah. Let's go back a little bit. Like, yeah. yeah. We got to ask kids how yeah. they feel. Because, like, we're getting older. So it's like time's getting shorter. Yeah. Right. Because, like, you think about, like, 10 years ago, you were kind of, like, the same person. But, like, when you were, like, 15, when you think about 10 years ago, that's, like, a whole different stage of life. True. You were, like, five. Like, you know what I mean? So that's why with kids, like, time is just, like... That was so long ago because it's like five, six, seven years ago, you were like learning how to read or, you know what I'm saying, go into the potty or something like that, you know, compared yeah. to like how you are at 15. But like from 15 to 25 or like 18 to 28, you're just like, okay, you're kind of like the same. You were yeah. kind of doing the same things, you know? So it's a little different. So I don't know. I would ask a little kid if time is speeding up. But I, I personally feel like it is speeding up. Yeah. I feel like ever since COVID. Yeah. Ever since COVID, my sense of time is so screwed up. I can't remember if things were happening. Like a memory I had was before or after that. Sure. There's things that happened during COVID that I felt like are long or longer ago than things that happened before COVID. You know yeah. what I, Does that yeah. make sense that the way sense. that I said it? Yeah. And it's like, I still, I'm just like, I, there's nothing that you can do about it. Time is going to pass no matter what. So all you can do is move forward. But it's like, sometimes I think about it and it's just like, not even, I'm going to say it makes me sad, but I'm just like, what is going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is this? Like. In time, it really is. It really is kind of an illusion, but it's kind of not because we are stuck in it. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, but everybody's perception of it could be different. Yeah, I watched this anime one time, and it was like it was showing time, and it was like through like a seed or a plant, and it was like the seed was like a tiny little baby, and it was all cute and stuff, and it's just like you know how fast plants grow and then they die, and it was mm. just like. In a blink of 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 an eye, it was just like it, it was like weathered and old. It was like a plant. It had like dry leaves and stuff like that. that and it just went sad. by. It did. It was sad. I was like, oh my god. But now <laughs> that plant. you like mentioned that, I'm just like, hmm. What if like you just had to like plant a seed and like all right, this like, this sounds like I'm high right now. But like, what if, <laughs> like, <laughs> what if you plant the seed and like every time like like to compare to a plant, like every time a plant dies. Like, it's going to grow to be a new one. Like, those are just, like, errors of your life. Mm -hmm. um, you just keep planting the seed and growing with it. Yeah. yeah. Like, you don't have to be the tallest. You just got to keep growing. <laughs> that's a, that's like a that. beautiful line right that there. That is. That is. <laughs> Clip it. Exactly. <laughs> no, that is true, though. And it's, like, even, like, on a larger sense, like, you could think about that as, like, people, yeah, like, people, not just your life, different stages of your life, but, like, your family and like your ancestors and shit because yeah. everything that you have is kind of built off that too yeah. mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then even just like talk about like animals in the wild like they die the they decompose and then that turns into the soil that the plants grow in so it's mm -hmm. like everything everything really is connected yeah like when i was younger people used to say like oh you know like like i guess it sounds like some hippie shit like oh like everything is all connected like we're all one like blah, blah. i didn't really used to believe that when i was younger but as I get older, I kind of really do believe that. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like the rose-colored glasses have come off for me. I'm just like, we're living on a floating rock. Like, we're just living and things will end for us eventually and life will continue on. And it's a cycle. It's the craziest yeah. thing to think about. I mean, if, sorry, go for it. No, I was just like thinking. Like, I think about my mom's grandfather that she knew really well. And she was like, he was born in 1898. And wow. she would tell stories about him and all the stuff like that. And... He died when she was like a teenager, like she moved to America and it was like kind of sad because like my grandmother was his favorite daughter. So it was like once my grandmother finally moved here, like he died like that uh. year, like it was almost like a broken heart. But it's like time is like weird. It's like he's from 1898 and my, my mother remembers him so well and my mother's here with me. Like, you know, it's like time is like yeah. so interesting. It's like she was like a baby just running around and now she's an older lady and I've got like a niece and nephew and it's just like you just watch things go on. Like I have an aunt that's like 96 years old and I she's so old now. She's an old folks home like one of her eyes is bad but i remember her taking us places like you know what i'm saying like you know when us like running around and her kind of going after us and stuff and i'm like damn she was like young at yeah. one point it's like crazy the way it is we're all gonna die <laughs> <laughs> well the thing that's even crazy about that you zoom out even more you just think of like humanity in general yeah like there'll probably be a time where this planet exists and there's no humans yeah. And there was definitely a time where there was a planet, no humans. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And even if you go even you think about just like civilization, it's like whatever, 15,000 years ago, there was no such thing as a house. 
True. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And literally up until a couple hundred years ago, like the biggest problem that you would have in your life is that in the middle of the night, someone could come in and like burn your whole town down yeah. and like steal you and like destroy everything that you've ever known. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like that's pretty recent. Like most of human yeah. history is that. Yeah, that's good. That's exactly. That's why I'm just like, I'm still in awe that like my great grandfather was born in 1898 and there's people alive on this planet. They remember him. Yeah. Cause like, that's like, that's like the gold rush. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's like just after slavery. That's like colonization. That's like, like really recent when you like think about it. It's just like the craziest thing. Yeah, like 120 years ago. Yeah. That's it's crazy. like, it's not that long ago when you think about it. Snow White is like the first animated movie. And that's over, that's like almost 100 years old now. Mm -hmm. like what? It's, yeah, because it's like early? 1939. And it's just like, when I was little... It seemed like a long time ago, but it it was still because I was I was of course born in the twentieth century, so it was the nineteen hundreds. Right. So it was just like right back then, but now it's like I'm older and I'm like, damn! In like ten, fifty, in like seventeen years, that's gonna be a hundred years ago that Snow White was made. That's wow. like insane. Yeah, yeah. What really got me recently was, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Miguel's uh sure thing like they I guess it's like having a resurgence on mm. like streaming and everything um that was like seven did they say 12 or 17 years ago i'm just like shit like i'm comparing that to my age i'm like wow i'm getting up there yeah, yeah. Uh, what did that for me was uh when man on the moon by kid cuddy hit wow. 10 years i was like that's like the the yeah. album that made me want to like be a musician and i'm just like that was 10 years ago we grew up on that <laughs> shit yeah. yeah and i'm just like i can't believe it yeah but crazy. it is what it is yeah Ooh. wait for no one Oh man. So what what are we gonna jam to? Guys, we're so excited to jam later on today. Wani's gonna sing. He's gonna um also dance a jig. No with his kidding. knee. <laughs> I can get sturdy. I wonder what like uh, speaking of time, like I wonder what this little um get together will spawn musically. Wait, down the road. I would also like to say I'm so proud of you guys. Um I remember talking to Dan about like podcasting. I was just like, oh, I don't want to do that. They're going to cancel me. Um, <laughs> and now you guys got like a whole podcast. Like, I love to see the growth from the YouTube to um, just like your music, all that. Like, I'm so proud of you guys. Keep it going. Yeah. Thank it's, you. It's like weird. I feel like a little, um, like, I, I feel like a, a little proud father. Like, like, <laughs> They're doing it. They're doing it. We're all from like the same class. It's yeah. just like really interesting. Double XL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Freshman class. Right. <laughs> but dude, that's how I felt too when I when I went and saw you at that movie, the documentary. It was yeah. so legit. And then you went and sang and your voice sound, your voice sounds so good, bro. Oh, like, thank you. And it's like, I know like you've gotten better since I met you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. The busking, when you're on the streets... <laughs> and like people have to tip you, you're gonna learn. Between yeah. that and going like to black crowds, I feel like with the black crowds it's like the Apollo. Like yeah. if you're not good, they're not gonna no, they're not gonna give you that little clap. No. Like you gotta sing your ass off. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm like slowly earning my stripes. Like even with my um my brother has like a residency at the Big C in Harlem, like mm -hmm. every other Wednesday. So I typically go there, sing like two songs and like I feel like I'm earning my stripes through that because it's a, like it's an older crowd, so like they're super serious. They're oh yeah, right. They're not gonna give you anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> but that is like something else. Like learning to like make your skill better and having to go out. Like for me with like rap and stuff, it's because like I was my like I said my my boyfriend that became my husband suggested that I started rapping. So he knew like the whole neighborhood. So it was like me being in the studio, my boyfriend at the time, like we were really young. So we weren't kind of like boy and girl. We were like kids. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, well, I got to do really well or else like the whole neighborhood is going to fucking like act like I can't do anything. So in the studio, like I just see a whole bunch of people there from the neighborhood and I'm just like, I can't show my face in the neighborhood unless I'm like really good. So it's like something just like flipped in my head. So that's like almost like being in the streets, like yeah. being in the studio. It's just like, let me do it. And then I earned a reputation of doing things like 
with one take all the time, but that's because I was so freaking scared or it's like, you have to, like, yeah. it's like, I just like, I need my first impression to be like a really good one. Like, you know. I want to say the first song that we ever recorded, <laughs> we went out to your, your friends, oh, your brother's friend's house in Long Island. Yeah. And like, we're in the basement and like, you know, we had to be going, like I, I took a few takes from me on guitar, like to get everything set up and see if it comes in one take. And I literally was like, do you do this all the time? <laughs> do you remember me saying that? I was like, is this, this is what you do? You just do one take? Because that was it. Like, it, and I couldn't believe it. You were just like, yeah, I think that's it. And then it, it, Dave was like, yeah, I think that's it. And I was like, how she the fuck does that happen? Yeah. 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 Your from childhood just being, really like, shaped scared. you. Like, yeah, yeah. Because it's just like, you'll get made fun of. And it's just like, I would rather not. Yeah. Because it's the types of personalities, the types of jokes. Like, you know what I mean? When you're dealing with, um, we call it stoop boys in um, East Flatbush. So it's exactly what it sounds like. You know, so it's just like, I don't want to hear that for the rest of my life. They used to make people cry. Mm -hmm. You know, there used to be guys in the neighborhood who I thought were like hot and like, I, I was like, oh my God, I would love for that to be my boyfriend. And then you hear about somebody made him cry last night and made him like run home. And it's just like... <laughs> You're like, I don't want him anymore. He's a loser. You're like, damn. This is so sad. Like, so, you know, yeah, you got to earn your stripes that way. Like, just getting out and doing it. Yeah. Like, you know. I feel like that's something that just not even in art, just in anything in general. Like, as you get older, like, whatever you're trying to get into, you realize that, and this has been said so many times, but, like, failure is just a, it's just a step. It's just a it's not a roadblock. It's not something stopping you. It's just something that's going to eventually get you to where you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. And if you are afraid to fail, then you'll have to do anything. Yeah. And that's that's really like the biggest reason that I moved here. Because I, I had my sister, she was like, you can come crash on my couch if you want. I didn't, whatever. I was like, all right. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, do I want to do that? And I'm like, I don't know how it's going to go. I didn't know anybody here. But I do know that if I didn't do it, then I would be thinking about it for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I didn't really think it was a choice. Like, I, I might fail, but at least I could say that I tried. Yeah. Yeah, I'm at sure. that same point. I don't want to look back on life and be like, oh shit, like I never did this. Like even with the like whole me like dyeing my beard or like getting the, the lip piercing, I was just like, I always wanted to do this. Like you don't want to be like 50, 60, like, oh shit, like I haven't lived my life. I haven't done this. Like you just got to just go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially if you have the beard. funds for different things. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I, I don't want to get too like depressing about it, but it's like, you don't even know how long you're, nobody knows how long their life is going to sure. be. So like I hate when um I'll be talking to people and then well maybe we'll have to reschedule with something and they're like oh don't worry about it there's pl there's plenty of time to do this and I'm like <laughs> you don't know that though like I would like to think so Man, and I now. I hope so live in the moment but I'm like I could get hit by a car tomorrow True. like literally like you really don't know so it's like every <laughs> like tr I mean it's hard to be present all the time but I'm like in my, my at this point I'm like every day I got to treat it like it's the only day that exists yeah. like every moment like this is the only moment right now I can't be worried about about other stuff because I don't even know if that other stuff will ever happen. Mm -hmm. True. But I know that this is happening right now. True. And that's that's with everything. True. Yeah, I saw a post recently. Um, well, like right before, so somebody posted something right before um, New Year's hit. They was just like, 365 days, 365 chances. It's like, hmm, that's pretty dope. So like, make every day count. Basically, mm -hmm. it's true. Yeah. I mean, when you wake up in the morning, it's it is a chance to do new shit yeah. every day. Unless you let the past catch up with you. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. Because that's also really easy to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have those talks with my therapist. She's just like, because I have like bad anxiety sometimes. It's not like crippling like it used to be. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, shit. I just lost my <laughs> Um you You're too anxious? You lost your train of thought? <laughs> right? I'm just like, I'm overthinking it. Um, he was just like, anxiety only comes from you living in the present. Or not living in the present, living in the past or the future. Mm -hmm. If you're like right here, what are you anxious about? Yeah, like you're bringing up old fears in your your mind, and also like um, shit that might potentially happen. What's going on right now? Nothing, right? So what's the problem? It's like, hmm, you changed that. You changed the way I view everything. Yeah, it's even true. I even I even heard uh, Bill Burr say some shit like that once. He was like, what's the point of like worrying about things in the future? Like if it happens, it happens. But if not, like deal with it then. Like why yeah. we got to worry about it now? Just yeah. enjoy this. Yeah. yeah. It's really true. It's That's funny how our minds true. work. Like it's literally like our minds attack itself sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I feel. I wonder yeah. like, is that like a, like a survival mechanism from like back in the day? Definitely. Like we were talking about like before like civilization and shit. Like if you, if you're like 
a hunter gatherer you're just like oh well when i went here before there was a fucking tiger there mm -hmm. so <laughs> if you're like i have to go there to get this food in the back of your head you're like well what if there's a fucking tiger there mm -hmm. exactly you know what i mean <laughs> i could die right now trying to get this food for me and my family yeah yeah that's crazy imagine like we evolved to like think that way and like like at the beginning of time what if fear wasn't a thing like yeah. you were just outside <laughs> i i just think about yeah. like the earth and stuff like that let's say like okay like so let's say if you're a garden of eden theorist right imagine you just get kicked out of the garden and the earth is like it's not even done yet <laughs> like you know what i'm saying it's not done up yet so imagine you step out Ooh. and there's like bushes and like there's so many things to like cut down like there's no roads like things right. like that like imagine like just coming out into that and having nothing there and then with time you just see like you just like watch the earth like change over time it's just like to me like that's just like one of the craziest things like imagining something before anybody even touched it like let's say like music or art or whatever like imagine that before people even got into knowing song structure mm -hmm. like what music was before sure. when it was just like open or it was just like sound and stuff like that that's like crazy to think of yeah it definitely started with drums i think we've talked about this before it yeah. had the first instrument had to be a that drum makes sense. yeah you know what it, because it's, all you have to do is tap so that makes sense yeah 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 100 yeah, yeah, and then we have a drum inside too yeah. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. that's that's good yeah. you know what i'll think about that all the time though ever like ever since i moved here I, if i'm in manhattan i'm just looking around i'm like there was a point where there was no cement here. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, there was, was a point, there was no, build, it was trees. Yeah. That was it. And dirt. <laughs> trees and dirt and maybe some water. Yeah. yeah. And now you look around, you're just like, this is the most unnatural thing that really could exist yeah. on the planet. <laughs> like, I can see why we're getting like raccoons and other animals that don't belong. Well, they technically used to live here. Yeah. They um, belong now, here more than us. Yeah, <laughs> more than any of the spot. Yeah. Sit, damn, we gentrified them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we gentrified the animals. What's wrong with us? Dude, that I mean that's literally civilization. Like every city that ever existed at one point did not exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was just like, oh, this is a nice piece of land by some water or like a river or whatever. What if we started living here? A thousand years later. Okay, now there's still some water, but there's no trees left. Yeah, and there's a lot more of us. Yeah. And we you just know? keep cre procreating, which is fine, but damn. Yeah. And you can see it in the city. Like when you first moved here, there were certain buildings that weren't up. Mm -hmm. Right, and now you can be like, I remember way back when like, <laughs> that wasn't even a a bank yet. Now I can see it from my roof. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Who are um? I want to know who are some of your biggest music influences? Because you know there is a R and B singer named Wanye from Boys to Men. Morris. Were you named after him? Because you're was. like a '90s baby. Yeah, yeah, I was. You had Shout to out be. to my mom. I was yeah. either gonna be a Tay. Or um, Wanye. Tay Diggs. I, I don't know if it, I don't know if she got it from that, or she, uh, she just wanted me to be Tay. He but was it makes big sense in the nineties. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> your mom's shout and out. I would have been mom. fine with either one, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I hated my name growing up. I definitely feel like I wanted to be like a, not a gym, but maybe like a. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine me, Jim. Jim Morrison. <laughs> Lots of young men think they were Jim Morrison at one point. Maybe like a Nick. Do I look like a Nick? You could yeah, be a Nicholas. Like a Nick? You would be a lot more of a Nick or a Nicholas than a Jim, yeah. I feel. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to have a simple name because it just makes things easier. Like going into school, I was Wayna, Wana, oh, Wayne. Yeah. Like if you read it out, I can understand Wanya. Yeah. But where you get in Wayna from? Like <laughs> W A N Y A. Like are you dumb? <laughs> Maybe they, they, don't, they got reading problems, reading difficulties. Yeah. But this is teacher. Dyslexia. <laughs> not even a kid. Oh, the kids got shit. it right. Yeah. It's teachers. Yeah, how did <laughs> like you went to school for this shit. Um, so yeah, she named me after Wanya Morris. Um, and it's funny enough that I became a singer off of that. Me and yeah. my brothers are singers. And um which is wild because I think it came from my father, and he's not like an artist or anything. Mm. Um yeah, and we have two different mothers, so I don't know what happened, but something happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, musical influences. Um so my mom used to blast Tank growing up, and I hated it. But <laughs> now I definitely look up to him. I feel like we have similar voices. Usher, of course. Oh yeah. Like, um, I started getting more in uh, Imogen Heap, especially after um, the whole Jason Derulo sample. Oh okay. Mm -hmm. Like I, I uh, so on the track, what you say? 
Like he got it from there. I didn't realize that till years oh, ago. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Know. So that's one yeah. now. Yeah. Um, Jason Derulo. <laughs> every fucking song. <laughs> Jason Derulo. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm like spread out every, like across like all different genres. Like even like growing up listening to like boys like boys like girls or uh, Panic at the Disco. Like mm-hmm. just literally everything. And I'm starting to get more into like newer artists like Daniel Caesar. Mm. Um, Chloe and Halle who else um, UK I love like oh, I'm in love with like UK musicians now like Jack James um, Mahalia literally everywhere yeah. I feel like I pull from old generations and new generations I want to start getting more into like the 70s and 80s music though oh yeah because I don't really listen to classics we can help you with that yeah <laughs> for sure um Cause I feel like that's when like soul existed. Like they didn't have auto tunes in the eighties. Like you had to like, mm-hmm. you had to know how to sing. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you, yeah, yeah. There was no faking it. Yeah, no, not so. at all. I think you would love like I don't know. I like a lot of uh, old eighties R and B. Maybe like Alexander O'Neill, like Ready for the World. Mm-hmm. I think you would like like artists like that. People used to have the Jerry Curl in there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I tried that once. That kind of back. Jerry Curl R and B. I've always wondered about the Jerry Curl, but people say it makes your hair grow really fast. So it's like weird, but it's to me, it's just too I think much. it's probably maybe like less breakage. Yeah. Especially I guess like, like when you have like 4 hair. Yeah. It makes sense. Um, yeah. But that's like, it's just too greasy. Yeah. It's like having a whole bunch of like oil in your hair. Like if you're a greaser mm-hmm. <laughs> and right, or having too much hairspray. It's just too much. It's too flammable. <laughs> Scared. Don't be by any open flames. <laughs> exactly. Like I tried that once in, well, it wasn't Jerry Curls, but you know, like the, the S curl former. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It fucked up my hair so bad. Like you think it's hard, like combing out like forcey hair to begin with. Like when you add that shit, it just makes it bad. Like, no, I can't. You need some waves. Yes. <laughs> Natural <laughs> waves. Waves for days. Yeah. Waves for days. <laughs> <laughs> What else are we talking about? I can't wait to play some music. Like, I'm just really excited for that. Same. Yeah. And you guys are going to get in on that as well later on in another video, but you're still going to get in on it. I remember last time I went to go see you guys jam. This was right before your um, your show. And then it ended up getting canceled because of the pandemic. Yeah. I remember having no voice. I'm just like, yeah, you guys go. Wait, when did that happen? I don't even remember. Wait, so it was, long ago. I'm bringing up. This like, was at a venue, or we? Uh, you guys were at like a studio space in Brooklyn, right off of the outline. The well. We were at the yeah, well. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh wow! It's I completely like, forgot about that. Yeah. Gonna rock it. Did you? You came through to like get a ticket or something, right? Yeah. I think yeah, yeah, ticket, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. 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 That's so funny. That's crazy. And then I remember, um, we we had a show at the well, and you came. Oh, yeah. I just came right after work. I was just like, I'm in the area. Why not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember wanting to blow in my mind because it's like, you know how you never really know how you seem to other people? Mm-hmm. Wande said that he thought I was from Brooklyn. Really? And that same week, somebody told me that I had a Florida accent. Mm-hmm. So I was like, what the fuck do I seem I don't like? Hear you. <laughs> yeah. No, literally that same week I was at work. Like I, I was with this. I had a meeting. And at the end of the meeting, this lady was like, so I've been trying to place your accent. Like, where are you from? I was like. Me? <laughs> Florida? She was like, oh, that makes sense. And then literally that weekend, you were like, you're not from Brooklyn? And I was like, what I the fuck like, do I seem like? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like people be lying. Like, oh, so uh, <laughs> um, what's your sign? Scorpio. Oh, it makes so much sense. Like, you curl your eye like that. Like, what do you? <laughs> yeah. Like, do you hear the Florida accent? I can hear a non-New York accent. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. It just but makes me laugh. in Florida, I'm just like, mm. No. Now we're guessing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The whole thing just makes me laugh. But it's just funny. Because, and then lately, like, people have been be like, people think I'm Spanish. People think I'm Italian. I can see it. Like, yeah. literally everything but what? Definitely. My actual ethnicity is. New York, New York, the New York Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah, definitely here in New York. You can definitely see that. Because a lot of people that are actually from New York that are probably, like, Spanish, Italian, that have, like, a rock look to them, they don't sound too New york Unless, like, you know, they're really doing, like, family stuff or hanging out with, like... But if they're, like, out in the city where it's really Cosmo and stuff, you're meeting different people, they don't sound really neighborhoody. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I could see why. But when I met you, I feel like you looked a little bit different. So I knew you weren't from New York. 
But something about you has changed since I met you. <laughs> I, <laughs> Did you get a haircut? <laughs> I, I try to work out more. I don't know. I don't know. But oh, I'll tell you a quick story about like uh, why why that came up. Like I literally, this was like a month ago. I told you about this. I was waiting for the subway, and like a dude, like homeless dude, like kind of came up to me on the side. It kind of freaked me out, and he was just like, "Hey, man, you speak good English." <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm just. Yes? I was, I literally, I was like, cause I don't know, I'm not trying to give away any information. This is exactly what it said. I was like, maybe. And he was like, come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, don't play me like that, bro. Look, I know you're Spanish and shit. Oh, wow. I'm dead. But I just, I just need a dollar. I need some lunch or whatever. <laughs> and Wait, like, that was the opener? That was what he said to me. That was literally I'm exactly dead. what he said to me. And he, I laughed so hard. I gave him a dollar. I'm like, that laughter was worth a dollar. I know you're Spanish and shit. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, I was like, At least I, got I, was like dollar. He, I literally was, successful. was like, that's news to me. Yeah. But no, he got the dollar out of it, but it, it made me laugh. And I don't know. You know what makes you kind of New York-y too? Is like your grandparents are from New York. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So and my dad. Like, but, and your dad is, you know what I'm saying? So you're going to act like them. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I feel like you're kind of New York. If you say so, I've never tried to. Obviously, we're, the band is from Brooklyn. I've never tried to say that I'm from New York and shit. Like, yeah, act like I've always seven two seven Clearwater, Florida. Yeah, but I feel <laughs> always, like we probably click or get along because you have people like it's like I don't know, sense of humor is kind of similar mm -hmm. or the same. Like it's like it's a good place for you to move because you have grandparents from here. Like yeah. I don't know. I always felt comfortable here. I always felt yeah. when, whenever I visited here because I had visited here so many times before I moved here. I was like. This feels right. Yeah. You Just like feel walking like around. at a place like some people do. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But I also feel like if I were to see you in Florida, you wouldn't look out of place. Like, you know what I mean? You would, like, Does if you were with your friends you and stuff there? like that, like, I feel, okay. yeah, I feel like you would be, like, the same. Because like, in my head, you wear, like, board shorts and, like, a... Uh, uh, um, like a tank top over there. Like just nah, beach but, every day in my head. I mean, I wear tank tops here sometimes in the summer. <laughs> but my mom actually used to make fun of me for wearing jeans all the time in <laughs> Florida. That makes sense. And I hate sandals. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, the the thong ones. The thong ones. Yeah. I hate. Those. I can, slides are cool. I'm yes. cool with slides. But the thong ones, I was like, I, I'm like, I'll never wear those. Same. Even like at the beach, I would like walk up to the beach and then I would take my my sneakers off and then walk onto the beach. People were like, "What are you a fucking shoe?y <laughs> You remember from Rocket Power? From Rocket Power, the shoebies? You know what I'm talking I about? I remember Rocket Power, I just don't remember Shoebie. It was like the, the word they use for like tourists that wear shoes on the beach. Uh, but I'm like, I'm like I was born and raised here, so I don't, you can say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> but that's funny though. I don't know. Yeah. I don't feel yeah. like I have an accent. I don't think so. Yeah. I feel like certain words are like, if can I you, get mad or something. Can you say the word all? All. That's the only time I've ever noticed you having kind of an accent. Oh. Or not even you, well, you definitely, but other people too that I know from New York, they're like, all. Well, yeah. You know, Coffee that's like the well. only time that I ever hear it from like a lot of people that I know from the city. I'm just like, oh, okay, that's how I know that you are from New York. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's not kind of, kind of like my grandparents from the Bronx <laughs> with oh. that super strong, <laughs> yeah. that coffee. That's how they talk. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So like, I'm just used to that shit. But I don't know. The whole thing is funny. Even like the idea of an accent is funny. Yes. I always bug out at that. Like, how did like... English accents become American accents. How did Caribbean accents get formed too? True. Like, you know what I mean? And how did the New York accent get formed? Because it doesn't sound like where you come from originally. Let's say like blacks, there was a big migration from down south to New York, right? For jobs and stuff like that. Jews came from whatever countries, Poland, wherever, here to New York, Italians, Irish people, all the people that kind of like quintessentially made like New York, you know what I'm saying? Italian, Irish, Jews, Blacks. And how did a New York accent get formed? Because Italian itself doesn't sound like, mm, you know what I'm saying? That, is, that is really interesting. Hebrew, Yiddish doesn't sound like, you know, a New York accent. You know, what are you guys doing over there? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't sound like it. Yeah. And, and I don't, I've heard Gaelic and I know it doesn't sound like anything you know, it's kind of like a shush, shush, shush. it's kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah. like that, you know? Yeah. So I'm just wondering how the hell, how did that happen? Is it the air? Is it, what? what is it? Like, 
I think it might be from being around other people. <laughs> I was going to say, if you guys know, you got to tell us because you're the research for us right now. Yeah. Um, like, what are you pointing at? <laughs> I, no, no, I'm, pointing, I'm, point, oh God, I'm looking right at the people, right? This is I for the so audience, okay? <laughs> um, but no, this has been a great time. Um, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you, I guys. mean, this, it's been great. I can't wait to jam later. Like, we're going to put it out um, on YouTube. I don't know when it'll be out, but yeah. definitely be on the lookout for that. Um, you have any closing words, anything you want to promote? Any, oh, um, if you're in New York City, come see us at Parkside Lounge, March 7th at 7 p.m. Um, it'll be our EP release show. So come come out, come support. Um, you have anything you want to leave off on? Um, look out for uh, be performing live soon, hopefully, fingers crossed, and more music in music videos to share. There you thank go. you guys for inviting me. This has been beautiful. Yeah. I was so nervous, and you guys made me feel comfortable. Aww. So. All right. Why am I leaning in like, as if I wasn't back here the whole time? <laughs> you got to whisper softly into the mic. <laughs> All right. So thanks again for watching, y'all. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next time. Peace.